My name is Jan Welch, and welcome to the third episode of the Then and Now Blading interview series with Chad Hornish. I've known Chad since when he rode for Nim Skates, and we visited Phoenix, Arizona, and toured with them up to Northern California. Chad's now been picked up by Icon, which is an exciting new skate brand out of Europe, distributed by Dist Royal Distribution. I talked to Chad about Icon, his skating, his travels, and going viral on Instagram. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure and hit the like button below. Leave any comments or suggestions you have in the comments area. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to be notified of all new video uploads. I also have links to my social media and my Patreon page in the description below. All right, let's get started. I hope you enjoy this episode. Today I'm going to be chatting with Chad Hornish. As many of you know, he's a very good inline skater that <laughs> now rides for Icon, new brand, being headed by Montre Livingston. Um, Chad recently, or at the beginning of the year, did an interview with Jump Street. That was back in like February, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And back then, you were, you had just quit Rossi's. Um, you didn't have a boot sponsor. You were skating for Conjure, which you were excited about maybe getting a wheel, but they've since folded. Yep. And you, you never got a wheel before they folded? Nope. nope. So you still need a pro something? Something. I, you know, I did a, a, a Blader Gang shirt that had my initials on it, but that was self-funded, and that was just to, like, have some merch for Blader Gang. Right. So besides a, like, self made shirt no products with my name on it yet so blader gang that premiere just happened in new york city during bashi pope and you were in that video oh yeah uh, are you you weren't sure if you're gonna have a mini view or if you're gonna just have uh be in the montages what ended up happening did you have a section or no so it ended up being all my clips were compiled i mean there was still some clips scattered throughout like the video intro and whatever like that but um I had a mini part for sure that was dedicated to my own song. I just don't think it's over two minutes, but I'm super pleased with it. And uh, I I think it's not out yet because Erod's still just doing the finishing touches. And I think there's even more than what I saw. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. So how was the rest of the video? It's awesome, dude. I mean, it's a, I love Erod stuff. It's just kind of like, a, you know, a different vibe. And I know how much fun it all is, but some people aren't into the... Uh, like slow-mo or like rap music whatever sort of thing right. or hd but uh, i love it i think it's really awesome and it's cool to just see like everything come to life after filming for so long that's great i want to see that when it comes out you guys were battling uh against the them premiere that night as well in new yep. york city how was the turnout over blader gang uh the blader gang premiere was awesome i mean we also there was a shop premiere called like chill town which is a new new jersey shop and it was awesome stocked with like a lot of new gear and we just did like a soft drop for blader gang there's a new like stand in there it's really awesome but there was so a there, warehouse say that again i was just gonna say that's a new aggressive skate shop in new jersey yeah it's like an aggressive skate shop slash like a clothing store something like that but anyways uh they had like a a warehouse right next to it like connected to it and there was like a box contest a huge open area for like the premiere projector i don't know it was maybe 100 people there it was tight that sounds rad yeah, i was trying I, to make it down but like i said yesterday with covid and everything i'm not trying to hang out with too many inline skaters in one warehouse yeah i mean if you've been there once you've you know you you know it's like you're not missing too much but it was a great time i'm going next year again for sure so boshi pope last year you won it you predicted you'd win and you did on jump street you predicted you'd win this year but you didn't what happened um you know i didn't feel any pressure this year and i'll be honest with you i had to pee really bad since before the contest started and I was just like kind of like yeah whatever everyone's running the bushes I didn't really want to do that didn't find out there's a porter potty right within like eyesight of my, me the whole time until like the finals and then at that point I'm just everyone's going off and I'm dealing with like a I like dislocated my wrist or something like two Thursdays ago and uh I just was taking it easy taking care of the blader gang stuff and uh 
I figured I'd just let somebody else win this year, you know, come back strong next year after some people think they really know what to do and I'll show them what's good. <laughs> yeah, well, I understand the uh, having a pee thing. Happens yeah, to me all the time, especially at, especially at Bashi Pope. Usually I have to go hide underneath a tunnel, but you don't know how many needles are hanging out and crackheads, there's, you know. It's like uh, there's more like orange needle caps like on the ground than there are rocks. Oh, yeah, it's insane. It's a pretty insane place. And, yeah. uh, so how was the competition? How was the skaters this year? Was there some good skating going on? Oh, yeah. I mean, at this point, everyone's going to have seen all the edits and all that stuff. Demetrius destroying his uh, hyperextending his leg. That was like right in front of me, probably as close as you could be to it. And then uh, getting up and doing it. And then uh, Yandrel's gap, true top porn or back stab, whatever, set slide, far side right. thing. Um, that was awesome. Everybody killed it. I mean, I'm just happy nobody really got hurt. You know what I mean? Because I don't like seeing people fall, but everybody did skate like really well. And uh, I mean, the level of competition was honestly probably a lot higher than it was last year because it, it seemed like there was almost twice as many people there this year. So yeah, it looked packed, you know, it, really busy. It was packed. Yeah, it was a ton of people, a ton of skaters. Everybody's throwing down. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was, yeah, man, I wish I would have skated a little harder in it now, but what are you going to do? I'm just happy I didn't touch my wrist on anything. Still got through to the finals, not the top five finals, but yeah, it was awesome, man. Well, it's better Everybody, save yourself for next year than to get hurt. Yeah, exactly. And I knew it was just like one back rail, like sit down and like stop away from just being back where it was a couple of weeks ago. So better safe than sorry, like you said. Yeah. So I want to touch back on when you and I first met, which was in Phoenix on a NIM tour. I was there with Montre and Shima and Elliot. And you we remember were there. The year? What's that? You remember the year? Uh, it would have been the year we started NIM. So Eight. I'm guessing around 2007. 2007, yeah. I'm guessing around 2007. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You guys came out for Thursday Night Skate. Yeah, for Revolution, uh, Thursday yeah. Night Skate that we sponsored with Nim that that night, and uh, and I believe I wasn't. I'm not sure. Was Casey McFarland riding for Nim already when we went there? Um, I don't. I honestly don't know because I think uh, the I don't believe so. I think right when uh, you guys came out was maybe weeks after you had announced Montre as like the first okay. pro. I couldn't remember if we had, cause we, we added you short, you know, shortly, or we brought you on tour to Northern California. And yep. Casey was on that tour too, right? Wasn't he the, yep. chap did the chaperone for the, for the kid crew? Yeah. So maybe, you know, he could have been receiving flow skates already through Revolution, you know, as far I as I know. I think that might be what happened. He might've been on the shop sponsor. Yeah, um, exactly. Because, you know, I remember we had the two of you representing out of Phoenix. Uh, which was pretty that cool was dope. for such a you know small team to have two guys from that city but oh, phoenix yeah. back then was also you know a hot spot for blading with revolution and so many skaters and all the transplants from minnesota and all over the midwest yep. you um, remember how many people were at those sessions like just that one you were at probably like 60 people right yeah and phoenix has a <laughs> lot of really good skate parks kind of shows in your skating on how good you are at parks and competition Thanks, yeah um, that's that's where i that's where i thrive yeah i mean you know street you're great on the street as well so you know when you came on tour to northern california with us that was your first kind of skating trip yeah i mean i i had taken like trips with friends to california you know but nim was like my first like actual sponsor like before that i had like a uh, havoc clothing you remember havoc? right yeah i remember havoc that a few yeah. Cool shirts. yeah they did but not not when the time i i got on there they were putting like cartoon pirate ships and stuff on the front it was a little weird and uh but nim was like the first real thing and that was for sure my first sort of like tour of any sort like with pros or 
anybody that was other someone other than my friends do you have any favorite memories from that tour um yeah i remember there's a ton of memories i mean i remember I, elliot gave us uh like an envelope of money mm -hmm. right when we got there so like, for like, yeah for food or whatever else and i was just like i, I will never forget that obviously and just seeing like all the stuff that happened. I mean, I was, it almost feels like a, another lifetime ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, uh, it was, I mean, I, you know, it's been 15, so, 16 years ago. It's a long, long, long time. And I've taken a break um, since then. So it feels like my first career with skating. You know what I mean? Well, uh, your first break is a direct result from NIM. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, when everything fell apart with Rattel and everything was chaos, uh, yep. you know, it, just some you know riders weren't contacted. Everything was just. So I apologize to you for. Oh, uh, dude, it's you know, no hard feelings. I have <laughs> no ill will or nothing bad to say. I mean, at the end of the day, it was just unfortunate for like everybody involved. So, you know, it's all good. I don't feel any anything negative towards anyone i'll say one of my favorite clips of you from that nim tour was when we went to treasure island that kind of abandoned island there in san francisco and we skated that sketchy like ditch the thing anchor. with a door with a door to the you know and you like fish brain stalled the top of it yep I yeah, ran that was up. a cool yep that was the ender for the and you had your long hair i know yeah <laughs> Peace, look at me now. <laughs> now you still Strong look good. One. Thanks, man. Thank you. But yeah, that was a sick trick. That was that was from the tour video. Um, yeah. which both those videos, the, the Arizona one and the tour one, both came were pretty fun to make and film. I mean, some of the actual bangers from the Nim tour were actually using the vicious video. Yeah, so yes. It, it for just kind of like the B-roll edit or whatever, not you know, not really the B-roll edit, but it was still like, a, I thought it was a really cool edit. I still watch that one sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I really like the Arizona one a lot too. I've, I've watched the NIM tour one so much, but thinking back on the Arizona one, uh, you use like the She Wants Revenge song, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That one is awesome. And then Shima like does the run up the wall thing. Yeah, that was sick. Montre really killed it too in that edit. Yeah, Montre is just beast forever. You know? So I wanted to talk to you about Montre. So, you know, we came with Montre to Arizona with Nim. Was that the first time you had met Montre? Yeah. So you, you were teammates for a short amount of time with Nim. And now he's your team manager for Icon. Yeah. How did that happen? How did you end up getting on a team working with Montre? Well... Honestly, he just approached me months before the even first initial launch of Icon. And he said, just message me. He's like, yo, bro, you're a pro. I want you to be with me on this new journey. And he was still even with USD at the time. And I was just like, yes, absolutely. No questions asked. Like, whatever you want to do, I'm on board to just be doing what you're doing. So. It, he reached out to me and I, I was one of the first he asked apparently just so, so did he watch your jump street podcast uh, about the rosie yeah, thing telling him that you're never going uh, pro with rosie's and then i mean you, you have know, to go pro with icon he uh he he could very well have watched it but as far as like uh like i know like his decision wasn't like persuaded off of like my jump street interview right like, I mean, maybe, maybe it was, and I'm sure like, you know, in this world, it's a lot about who, you know, no matter what you're doing or whatever it is. And I'm fortunate that I have a history with Montre in the past and maybe he did know my situation and whatever happened because he, you know what he could have, because the whole thing with rollerblade happened as well, where I was like, uh, thought I was going to be with that. And then mm -hmm. he, uh, he just reached out and offered it to me and I just said, let's go for it. Whatever, whatever that takes, whatever that means, let's do it.
Well, that's awesome. Um, have you had a lot of like contact with Montre throughout the years, or? Um, yeah, you know, because uh, just through Blader Gang and stuff like that, we would see each other in Long Beach or whatever random trips. And through competition, since I've came back, I've been to Winter Clash and whatever else. And we we've been friends for so long. Every you 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 know you're not you're not surprised how often uh, you see people. We're all traveling in the same places, but we saw each other quite often um you know didn't chat too too much you know it's not like a every week sort of thing hey how's it going but definitely when we saw each other the connection's always there and it's like no time had passed you know mm -hmm. so you were one of the first people he asked to join icon and who else is on the team with you we've got uh katherine enro and mina lee and sasha Lopez and uh, B Free and Montre. And have you met all the other people on the team? I'm sure you know B Free, but yeah, other um, skaters? the only person um, that I haven't met yet is Sasha. Um, I think maybe we've met once, like uh, when I was at Winter Clash, but I don't think so. But yeah, everyone else, uh, I've met Mina at Blading Cup, um, Montre, you know, obviously B Free a whole bunch. He lives statewide. And uh, Catherine was just out at um, in New York for the BPSO, okay. and we we all linked up there and hung out. So yeah, every just about everyone so far. So uh, what's the what's the concept behind Icon? What did what did Montre like? How did he come at you about it with the going pro? I mean, Icons make a lot of stuff, you know, frames and wheels and you know, Does Trinity compatible frames and big wheel stuff and aggressive and. What was the I mean, what was the concept? How was it presented to you about Icon? He just presented it to me as a boot sponsor, you know, and that's going to also be providing like a whole new style of like urban or recreational, whatever you want to call it, frames. Um, so, but it to me, you know, it's like a UFS boot sponsor. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so happens that they're covering like all of the urban categories as well recreational stuff so they've got like the frames that take like five different wheel options stuff like that even these frames can have an h block um Wait, uh, let's see a close-up or is it a secret oh yeah so, yeah cool. they're cool. So right now you have four by one in there those these hundreds? are four by these are four by 80s right four here 80s, okay and you can see maybe that there's a the custom bearing in there that is like has a spacer integrated into it uh-huh yeah i see that yeah that's cool these uh middle ones right here are actually rock rubble so uh -huh. depending on where you turn them it's a millimeter up or down so those look completely unskated have you put them on yet i haven't i have not because i've been traveling so much and uh just due to like shipping issues, um, one of my boxes got damaged mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> the bearings fell out. Oh, really? Like, yeah, all the bearings fell out. And That's so a travesty. I, yeah, exactly. It was terrible. And so I, I ended up getting uh, some new wheels sent to me at like 100 mil wheels because uh, I had enough bearings to make that work. And since getting those, I've been... Uh, traveling new york whatever just finally got home i'm gonna set them up tonight have you done any big wheel blading yeah i've i've done a little bit i don't you know i don't do it like that i'm not gonna like really go out there and uh like show what i do but i go out there and skate a lot i've done like some big wheel stuff i've actually done some like dirt on big wheel stuff which was a pretty fun like mountain bike jumps that were like yeah those are rad cement packed pack you know um yeah it's fun i'm really excited to give these a go i mean I like everyone... watching some of those guys like psycho burn just taking kind oh of you God. know aggressive skating it's aggressive skating but on big wheels without the rails i honestly um i i do it like for recreational purposes and exercise and stuff like that i live in the suburbs so it's not like i'm in a city being able to skate like whatever as a commute but uh um Right now, I'm just happy to have them and use them like when I can and when I need to. But 
I'm going to stick with like the aggressive side of stuff while I can and Mm -hmm. save that stuff for, you know, when that's what I can do. I'm not going to be jumping on handrails forever. You know what I mean? But I plan on skating forever, but I'd rather just do the stuff that I can do aggressively now. Mm -hmm. And while I know that I'll be able to still do the big wheel stuff in the long term. So have you gotten Icon Boost yet? No, but any day now. Any, any day now. Any day, yeah. And I got How excited are you? Oh, like, I can't wait. I can't wait. They're, I saw them at BPSO, Montreal had them. And I mean, when you think of an ideal skate, that's like pretty much what that is. So it's like, like a team kind of, are they doing pro skates already or are they going to be doing pro uh, skates? I would imagine that pro skates will be in the works for sure. Um, you know, first things first is the launch of the, uh, the, the boots. And mm-hmm. uh, that is just a team boot, like a normal, no, no name on it, except for icon, no, not a pro model. Um, and there's several urban boots coming out as well. Like their website um, on the Disroyal side is pretty extensive. Have you talked to any of the, uh, are you dealing directly with Montre or are you dealing with any of the guys from Disroyal as well? Yeah, um, I'm in like in emails and CCs with all the people at Disroyal, but um, 95% of it is just dealing with Montre and we're, uh, we have a group chat with the whole team and we stay in contact in there pretty much daily. So the launch of Icon's obviously been a little pushed back with COVID and manufacturing issues and all that stuff, which is, you know, pretty crazy that they would, you know, I mean, to launch, to be able to launch a brand during this time yeah, you know, I know. When, when you can't even get, you know, stuff made, but they're doing it and everything looks good. Marketing looks great. Team's excellent. Um, is there any plans for a uh, in-person team tour get together in the future? I- yeah, totally. I would imagine that as soon as we all get the skates and figure out what's going on with the world, you know, um, mm-hmm. we'll just take everything into consideration and go from there. But definitely, I, I would imagine we'll be trying to get the uh, the team together, you know, somewhat often to to get that uh, that vibe, you know. Well, you know, as far as getting together, you know, what COVID's almost a year, what a little bit over a year. And you've done quite a bit of traveling skating wise during yep. COVID, right? Like going to Texas for Blade Classic and you've got yep. quite a bit of competitions. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, at um, Pow Wow is when it was like a, a wave came over the whole nation like that day at Pow Wow. They, they went from like um, being allowed to have like a, full spectator events to that day like no groups over like 300 or something like that they had to cancel the golf tour that was going on that day all that stuff um but i've been to uh that powwow and that was you know um after amsterdam i'm sure stuff was going on since amsterdam winter clash um i don't know probably five or six contests um Colorado road trip, New York, California, quite a few times. Yeah, I've seen you. Lots of traveling. Yeah, well, because honestly, I'm not a... I I need to get out and skate stuff like not here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been skating in Arizona for so long. it's, It's nice to just go somewhere else. And even if other people have destroyed spots, it's like, still new to me and it's like i don't care what has been done whatever if i'm, I'm just trying to skate do stuff so i i like just traveling um as often as i can just because like i said i'm just doing it while i can like why not like it, it's fairly affordable like cheaps are like or flights are pretty cheap like uh i'm gonna get a flight in the next few days for the contest in texas mm-hmm. like the blade, October. The blade classic yeah, and I'll just do a flight that I'll show up there in the morning and then leave at night, and uh, it'll cost me like 75 bucks round trip. That's great. Yeah, so I mean, stuff like that, I don't even like think about. I'm like, oh yeah, just boom, I'll do that no matter what, just to 
get the experience, you know, rather than just sitting here looking at grass grow or whatever, you know. Well, Rossi has sent you on some trips, right, when you rode for them? Yeah, they, they took care of uh, my travel for some stuff. I mean, I would say... 90% of the travel was paid for by me still, you know, okay. like it paid for a flight or two. Right. Yeah. Entries. Well, well, hopefully everything works out with Icon and you can start, you know, making yeah. some trips through them. Totally. Yeah. Icon is a, uh, I'm so happy and thankful to just be a part of this man. Like for real, like they're already doing so much for me with, without even having the boots out yet. So just to, uh, just to be a part of it and see where it's at right now, I have no no doubt that the future is just going to be even better. So, are you still riding any rocker? <laughs> yes. And you always ridden any rocker, or have you stomped back between flat and any rocker? Always anti rocker. I tried the uh, um, those metal ground control frames, you know, mm -hmm. with the H block and. Yeah. Those are, aren't made for anti rockers, so I tried them flat. Did one skate park session or two, and uh, I can't do it. Too fast can't. or what? No, I'm just a uh, wheel bite, and it's like, why at this point in my skating, why am I gonna try and make things more difficult for myself? You know, it's right. like people, say, oh, you don't, you're not as smooth, and you don't, you know, you know, yada yada yada. It's like okay but you're gonna just like kill yourself doing a front royale or something like that or a backside it's like i would trade the whatever percentages of smoother rolling for like the zero percent chance of wheel bite right well i watched yeah. pink. i watched today i watched pink and dream in pink and nice. not and not pink whoa and you know i noticed that you were skating and rocking you know every one of them and skated really well smoothly you weren't you know sticking or falling or you know yeah, thank you. ass i was curious uh what is the, the the story behind pink the name and the theme and you know all those sections were filmed and edited by ryan buchanan correct yeah and it was like the concept like yours or his or both of yours it was uh that was all ryan's idea all I ryan's did. Yeah, I give Ryan full creative control on whatever it is he's working on when it comes to like me. I don't even suggest music just because it's like his art sort of thing, you know, it's like uh, all him. And I'm sure I could like make suggestions for whatever else. But ultimately, I know like he's going to make the best stuff doing it the way he wants to do it, like all the way around. And the pink name concept, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. I'm pretty sure he had just added like a pink-ish filter to like the whole, or to a whole lot of clips or maybe all of them and just liked it and then just uh, decided to call it that. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, but I do like the concept of the pink. Yeah, I do too. And it worked really well and it kind of stuck. And now, I mean, we can just run with it i'm happy that it worked whatever he did it worked and those videos those videos were all vod's no like the first the, two the uh the first two were or maybe i think just the second one was we did okay. the first three and then the second one we uh i think now i can't remember they, they could have both been no i think let me uh, I have like these cards like business card things that I like printed out for Winter Clash as promotion and I actually where is that thing I got a whole bunch of these little like uh, flash drives and put um, the VOD on it and sold them at Winter Clash that's and, cool uh, that's a cool yeah, concept cool. yeah and uh, people dug that but it was at Winter Clash so it didn't get as much uh, attention but still did well i mean it's going to end up going online for free eventually anyways but might as well people want to support so i'm happy to let them support you know well that's and good i mean you know i believe that you and ryan 
You put a lot of time and effort into making those videos. Yeah, so, I mean, we don't get know. out too too often, and um, he's got you know a life outside of skating. He doesn't, you know what I mean. But uh, we it typically takes like a full year for him and I to come up with a full part, just because of our schedules, me traveling and everything being conflicting, and the weather. On top of that, it's like impossible to get out and skate for like four or five months out of the year unless it's at night. So I have a question for you mm -hmm. in, in regards to like being a professional skater now and actually making a living of skating, obviously like it was possible in the nineties and your early two thousands, but the last 20 years have been pretty tough for a lot of skaters, you know, and the VODs have helped and people doing, you know, YouTube, whatever, different things, you know, make money here and there. Um, but now, you know, with the growth of blading again, there's resurgence and companies like them, you know, paying high royalties and the gods. And you think it's like, uh, do you think you personally have an opportunity to make money in blading in the foreseeable future? Mm, it's a weird thing. It's a weird question to answer because I honestly do. I think that that is probably pretty probable. Um, possible just because of like i said how things are going just so far based on whatever we've got going on with icon and how i'm being treated so far um well i think I, you know gods and and you know them setting a good example those, they're setting you know, a, a big you know uh, all the companies have to fall in line i mean it's obviously going to raise the price of skates but I feel like throughout the years, you know, a lot of skaters should have been paid a lot more money than they were. You know, boot companies are still making a lot of money, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was a little still... bit different with NIM because, you know, it was more grassroots and we didn't have the money to order enough skates to make it cheap enough. But, you know, the only big companies like New York Volume and doing numbers. Yeah. It's a lot easier to make money and pay yeah. riders. Um, so it's good to see that Julio and, you know, Frankie and, whoever else, whatever other brands are doing that now, it's oh, like yeah. it's being more transparent about it. I think it's Julio, great Julio, for the future. Julio started it for sure. That Danny beer skate. Once he put, raised that royalty, I forget what it was, but he raised it like 10 times from what it was or something like that. And that just started the trickle effect of other brands just feeling obligated to give the writers more because they want to, you know, compete so i'm happy to see it and i mean it's been a long time coming but you know it's here now so yeah. let's just keep on doing it i mean it's what we always waited for you know at rattail and right. had rattail still been around today it would have been you know 20 years of waiting so <laughs> oh, god so yeah you know, people like julio keeping it real it's great yeah totally man it's doing so, a good job i want to touch a little bit more on like traveling um of all your trips you've done in your skating career, like what's, what was your favorite? Do you have a favorite? What it stands out the most? Um, you know, there's so many, man. Like uh, going, I think just to Europe for my first time, like for the first, my first uh, winter clash. Um, that was pretty memorable because i went out there and during like my like introduction run just took like the worst fall of my like entire life like flipped on beer and hit my thigh on an up ledge like round coping and just like stopped on impact and oh wow full full speed down like double rolling sort of thing you know and uh that that's i still have like atrophy on my leg like dents on my leg from where the impact was so uh, that was pretty memorable and i mean before that we did so much skating um i mean there's so there's so much like even like you're saying the nim tour i'll never forget that was a good one um uh what's let's see which new york last year when i won that was a crazy trip for me just because I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like 
actually happen. It's just like a surreal sort of thing that I'm very fortunate that like the memories are just like stacking up like so much and they're all pretty good ones that I uh, starting to lose track, but I feel like that's a pretty good problem to have, but I can't say one for sure. That's the most memorable. Did you ever get a chance to skate at the feast competition? No, I didn't. And I was really uh, trying to push for that for like a month or so. I kind of like, I posted on Facebook even. I was like, I'm going to this, you know, just to like say it out loud and just follow through with it. And then whatever happened, I forget it. I, it just didn't end up happening for whatever reason. Is that a competition you want to try to get to in the future? Mm, you know, I would, yeah. But um, just to experience it and say that I did it. But when you look at those people competing in there, like uh, they're just animals. Oh, yeah. Incredible. They are, they're they're like they're just different people you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. they're like gymnast slash rollerbladers but most it's of like, them you know you grew up with skate parks right but yeah, yeah, yeah. they all grew up with like the perfect indoor skate parks well, you know like not, most of them did yeah but some of them were just extremely like fortunate and just talented just like born that way but yeah when i I think about it and then I'm like, I'll see like a, a run that Roman did or Joe did or something. And I'll see like a full 60 run and they'll do like a flare and a front flip and like another flare or something like that. It's like, I can't even think about putting in the, uh, I can't do that stuff. You know, it's like, right. I'm not going to really try and, change too much from what i'm doing right now because what i've been doing has worked are you skating any like a uh, real street contests at all yeah 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 i mean when they uh, come up like um i'm there's like a cleveland contest coming up or something in a few days something like that i'm not yeah. going to that there's Maybe also the the uh, denver one coming up denver, too. Yeah, yeah i'm gonna, gonna try going to that for sure um that's a great competition I I went to the last one last year and uh, it was the first time in like since skating again um, that I hit my head like decently, like just like kind of got messed up on a negative macchio on a rail and uh, like racked it kind of, but slipped over the side and then hit the support at the end of this, hit the back of my head a little bit. And it, really scared me and I told myself I was like unless I find out that the spots are going to be like significantly better next year like this year coming up then I'm probably will only go and just to support you know and hang out but right know, just because it like from what I saw just driving through Colorado for the road trip like it's littered with really good spots there's a lot of good spots in Denver, but there's a problem with skating in Denver is every spot you go to, the locals like to remind you every single trick that Brian Aragon did on that rail. <laughs> right? So it's like every rail has been killed by Aragon or it's capped. So that's yeah. your two options. I know. Well, I do. We can go a little outside of Denver, a little bit, whatever, you know, I, I, there's new spots. Probably. I don't know. I don't live there. I'm not trying to talk badly on it all. It's just Last year, it was like a, a curve ledge that was rounded like like this, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was like, what, not, not a great ledge. And the second spot was a rail that I hit my head on, whatever, and that was like a square down rail. It's like, uh, all right, we can't even do a round rail. And then didn't skate the final spot, but the final spot was like a even more square crazier down rail with like a kink at the end it's like okay what you the people are struggling you can't even like hold a sole down the whole rail because of how long it is and how square rounded it was you know right just yeah. that's yeah, a bummer. it's a contest so people were still getting down and i mean the best person won so i can't tell you who that was i think i was maybe a little mildly concussed but uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to go for sure. I, I, okay, to answer your question, I do go to street contests, um, but I will definitely tend to go to like a park contest more so um, just because it's more in my element. And uh, yeah, I mean, a street contest, I would love to go to one. If there, if there were that, if there were one, you know, there's not too many besides like the ones you mentioned. Are there any park comps you haven't been able to go to yet besides Feast? That you've been wanting to go to? Mm, no, the X Games. X Games. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. I uh, guess. I guess the closest to X Games would be like the World Skate event that they have. Yeah, they had, yeah. They had in, Brazil, in Spain two years ago, and this year they're having it in Colombia or something. But the problem with the U.S. it's like kind of every country has an organization and they you know fly their riders to that country but the u.s doesn't have it for aggressive skating they have it yeah, for but- like slalom and speed it's like the only country that's not organized with an organization to, to s- send riders to that event how do we get organized well aggressive skaters are going to have to get involved with the organization that exists in the u.s ready and tag you know, like you know, join on to it like a union make a union yeah like what do you mean like an association yeah there's like it's there's usa roller sports that's like an organization in the u.s it's been around for a long time and they basically are the governing body of speed skating like marathon skating slalom skating roller skating and every country has an organization like that but there's those all involve like aggressive skating too like this is the only one that doesn't because aggressive skating in the u.s and that kind of always had a rift where you know from the beginning in the two, you know, 90s 2000s where aggressive skaters like oh speed skating is not cool speed skaters like aggressive whatever you know so they didn't really they didn't really grow together you know and i think that's changing now with like big wheel blading and people crossing over so it's a good time to approach those people again to like try to include aggressive because do my you know thing is, people? I don't know him personally, no. And I think they just had a restructuring of like the organization. Cause like, you know, with doing that big wheel blading site, I've learned a lot about the different disciplines or a lot more than I knew, you know? Um, so, but I'm still learning about it, but you know, it's something I can check into because definitely uh, it was kind of a bummer to see that event happen two years ago with no American skaters in it. Yeah. Isn't that like part of like, the reason why like rollerblading can't be like in the Olympics because there's no like uh, official like association or something. It's that's part of it, and but USA Roller Sports is yeah the organization that would handle that. Years ago, you know, in the early two thousands, at Woodward, there was several meetings held to get aggressive skating into the Olympics, and myself and John Elliott and Angie Walton and a lot of people and I don't remember who all was there but we're all like part of the this new olympic committee for aggressive skating to get aggressive skating into olympics but you know it was like early 2000s everyone's young unorganized it kind of you know after a few meetings it kind of flaked out so nothing happened with it and back then it was like this whole rift with that you um usa roller sports ready because they kind of wanted to do the whole thing but we were too cool to let them do it. That was, you know, so we kind of like pulled away from them at some point back then. So this is um, a lot of bitter taste resentment, yeah. you know. You know how uh, blade, bladers are. You get on uh-huh. message boards. Sounds pretty typical. You know. Yep. You see uh you know r- rollblading groups on Facebook or old message boards that say, you know, rollbladers are their, their worst enemies. There's a group on Facebook called Blade Hate. Mm-hmm. I've seen it hilarious yeah i'm actually in the group just to see, see what's happening and usually i just like to see how many people hate on me on it so yeah no yeah no, that's what I'm <laughs> for. i know it's coming i know it's coming i just go in there peek in every you know month or so and do a quick all right they don't have a picture of my bald bald head with a half pipe dent in it i think you look fine right now thanks um do you have any uh, video projects you're working on currently? Um, you know, 
it's funny that you say that because I just got uh, asked this morning if I wanted to do something with Carter LeBlanc. Okay. Awesome. And, Carter's uh, rad. Yeah, Carter is like the best dude in the world. And uh, I'm actually going to talk to him on the phone after you and I are done with this meeting and see what he wants to do and talk more about that. Um, I'm always trying to do something with Ryan, but we just released that Not Pink, which was basically just like stuff that we had gotten just randomly here and there, you know, just while I was in between skates or whatever. But now that um, Icon, uh, like I'm getting the skates soon, soon, um, for sure, just going to be like continuously working on projects to promote that and just, oh, I'm sure, just Lots get of promotion hyped you know just wanting to skate them because i'm super excited i keep looking at my skates now wishing that they were them but they're not well i mean just royal and icon they've been doing a lot of promo for a brand that they don't you know have the stuff in for yet so it's to, when, once they get everything in the team has it it's going to be interesting to see what they come out with because they've done a really good job marketing so far with limited you know, resources yeah i know given what what we've had i mean they've done great and their website is like awesomely done if they've got a full like a 3d thing you can see the full frame and zoom mm -hmm. in it's very cool that's um, right we've done a, a they've done a lot with that and i'm excited to just get the skates and just keep making like whatever it is you know for like full length or just promo whatever it's gonna well, i'm be excited to see what you come up with i'm excited to see the skates thanks and man. hopefully i'll see them in person sometime you know being up here in vermont is kind of hard to get out and see what skates people writing but no, no. you know yeah, it won't be long so i know icon does you know a wide array of wheels and frames for freestyle skating and urban skating but they're also doing wheels for aggressive skating yeah they are they've got um i don't know what it is i know they've got 80 millimeter they've got 100 mil 110s and like four others in between that and they also do have aggressive wheels and multiple sizes and uh, pores, they've got, um, these are 58 millimeters with the rounded profile. Yeah, those look nice. And we've also got like the uh, new cornstarch, the uh, eco-friendly wheels. Those are more of a flat profile. And now they're also coming in the rounded profile, all available in like 55 to 60 millimeters for aggressive sizes. Yeah, I was looking at their website on their wheels. And it looks like they, they're making pretty much every single size wheel that exists yeah, for Icon. Every pretty crazy. Everything, I know. Yeah. It's nice, though. I'm happy to be a part of it. And like, like I said, just very grateful. It's like anything anyone could need. It's like this company is offering it. Yeah. And they got clothes, shirts. They've got, we've got so much stuff coming on bucket hats, shorts, bag, mm. like. You're going to get some big boxes coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not mad about it. Looking wow. forward to it. Looking forward <laughs> to everything we got to showing everybody else. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. For I've got a lot of, a lot of new followers this week. Oh yeah. Did you see that? No. What happened? I just went viral. You did. What, what, how, my, how so? My most recent reel has 2.3 million views. Oh, really? And it reached like 2.4 million accounts, has like 80,000 shares and a quarter million likes. On Instagram? On Instagram. Wow. Well, how did, how did it get viral? It's an old clip from when I grinded that roof at Texas. Uh -huh. And I just put um, like a popular song that was like on Instagram, you know? And it just like a few days had like a hundred thousand. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then like two nights ago, three nights ago, it hit a million. And I was like, what the heck is going on? That's crazy. Go to bed, wake up. And like 24 hours later, I hit it's 2 million. And now it's at like 2.3. And I've had like people messaging me, like saying like, yo, my homie was just out on break with me smoking a cigarette. And he said, check out this crazy video and it was this video that's I'm amazing like, oh, yeah i know it's so amazing that's a, that's a clip of you doing the backside at the alliance skate park up high yeah. in the rafters yeah, yeah, yeah. that was sick yeah. that was a really Thanks. sick trick i'm i'm happy it was, if, it was, you know, if it was on youtube you could have made you know a hundred thousand dollars dude 
Dang, is that is that what they pay for two million views? I have no idea, but oh, I don't I'll know take... either. I'll, I'll take whatever. But how many new followers just, did you get out of that? I went when I got to New York. Right at the same time I posted the video, I had sixty five hundred, and I think now I have eleven point five k. Wow. And I had Instagram for years, and I've almost doubled it in the past like week. It's like a I don't even know how to react to it. Well, now that you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, now you can ch change your settings to where you can actually post links in your stories. That was, I know it's cr honestly, I didn't really think it was going to happen because I was sitting at like 65, 7,000 for like, I've had Instagram for three years now. And I was like, Oh, it's probably gonna be another year. Or so with posting to hit, you know, at this rate to reach 10,000. And I never would have thought it would have just, now it's going to hit, I don't even know. It might hit 3 million views, the video. I don't even know how it happened, but. See what happened, happened. With, with Instagram is the, the reels now. They're trying to compete against TikTok, right? So, yep. so, you know, I've heard that they're planning on making it more of a TikTok type application in the future versus a photo sharing application, which is kind of a bummer because I, like I like Instagram, how it is. It's good. I, I like it too. I'm a fan. That's why it's the one i use exclusively pretty mm -hmm. much um so you're an influencer now now i'm an influencer you want to know what <laughs> now i'm officially an influencer i swipe up and no um, or you're not official official because you don't have the official check mark next to your verified know. you know no i i no different from when i just had 6500 a week ago it's just it is kind of strange though because it's almost like a an immediate boost in status you know what i'm saying it's like right. i don't i could i don't care but like when i like look at somebody i'll like look at somebody's my friends or like somebody i follow and i'll be like what the hell how do i have more followers than this person all of a sudden and i was like this doesn't even make sense like know, it's just really weird it's kind of surreal and overwhelming to be honest I'm but it's cool um jones soda messaged me saying they want me to put in a video so they could put it on a soda can or a soda bottle well you should do that because yeah, well, you I can make to, good money yeah they they want me to like just submit it you know mm -hmm. and then uh, but like a, tons of people submit but they like asked me to submit it so they could use it so we'll see i'll know in a couple of weeks and i'll definitely let you know that would be pretty rad definitely follow up on that with me that'd be cool yeah, that would be insane. Oh, I've seen sure. some of these YouTube channels. Like one of my friends, his son is like a YouTuber, uh, has a gamer channel, and he's sponsored by some sort of energy drink. You know, he makes like 70 grand a month just in endorsements from the energy drink. Not a month, sorry, a year. Um, but in endorsements from energy drinks. And half the episodes are just talking about energy drinks. You know, I'm like, it's crazy. What is, is he's a gamer? <laughs> yeah, gamer. So instead of the icon stuff, he'll just have like a one of right here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, so, one of them one of them has his image on it. That's that's I would do it. Seventy grand a year. Oh my god, I would do that. I mean, there was a lot of corporate sponsors, you know, back in like the nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, know, we'll see. Nabisco and everything. I remember like some people who wrote from Nabisco and they had just like tons of free food, you know, or being on when Calvin Sells was on the cover of Kellogg's. Could you imagine nowadays? Yeah, right. I mean, somebody like uh, we get in the Olympics or something, get the eyes on us. I want to see you on like a Pop Tarts package. I, I, I'll take a soda. <laughs> I'll take a soda label. You know, I don't care. I don't. I'm happy to even just have blading shown to 2.4 million people. You know. Yeah, that's the best part of the whole it, thing. And it's not like a fall. It's like something that's pretty cool and people yeah. are through the roof it just i'm just happy that there's that many people that got to see rollerblading in a good way there's still some haters in there i, I delete some comments like that i'm like okay you don't need to be like saying that stuff but i, I feel like you know, there's a lot less haters than there was now yeah a, because mean, people grew up and b like you know with just with the way society you think that a video that has like 1500 comments on it and then like uh there's every you know hour i'll look 
and like one out of the hundred or one out of 50 new comments will be like fruit booting still gay <laughs> or you're you're still you're still lame or or like be like they'll be like uh someone said like uh, i guess that was cool still looked awkward as fuck and i looked at the guy's page and it was some guy that does like tech decks and i was like okay <laughs> awkward coming from the fingerboard guy and then he just said something else and then i it, people they really do still hate it's real i didn't even i thought i was all good because most of the people that i was getting comments on before were just fans or good friends you know it's all supportive but now there's still a lot of haters out there and people are um, still it's unfortunate i will say yeah. you know when it comes to fingerboarding though i don't know if you knew i actually had a half page photo in a magazine no. yeah it's true dude i'm not hating <laughs> i said, said that i was awkward and i said try skating with something other than your fingers and then talking to me have you tried fingerboarding <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty impressive probably just hating <laughs> but i no, can drop I'm just, it i'm just joking one trip you haven't done yet which you should do is come up to vermont for the new england bladen camp that i host every year when is that it just happened the weekend before fashi okay so and it's uh um, you gonna do it the same next year i'm probably gonna have it earlier in the summer when it gets dark at like 10 to maximize you know, the daylight it's a it's a fun trip it's like colorado road trip yeah it's, it's five days of skating and swimming so every day there's like two skate parks and a swimming hole it's a good time you know it's kind of a mellow colorado road trip but yeah so that's awesome dude i'm really stoked about the whole icon me too man situation Super. and you know especially like you know with what happened with rosies and then conjure going out and you know for a moment minute for a minute for a minute it seems like you know things are going south and then all of a sudden mantra hits you up and you're on like the new hot brand i'm uh i can't believe it man you know the rosie's all of them what are they, what are you thinking you know come on like i'm just like so happy to just be like look like i fucking i showed you you know like yeah. it's just so great to just be like okay you're not gonna do this like and somebody else is going to it's like that's I just feel so thankful and grateful to be in the position I'm in. And like I said, at the end of the jump street, it's like, I didn't know anything was going to happen with icon at that point at all. I hadn't even talked to Montre, but I knew like good things were going to happen. Like that the best was still to come. You know what I'm saying? Just because I really believe that, like I'm out here doing this really working and I'm traveling, living the life. It's like, can't not happen yeah i mean you're working hard i mean i see stuff from you all the time you yeah know? and it your skating is takes, it's a pleasure to time. watch and it's been really cool to see how you've grown since you know you had little kid in phoenix and on it's, tour with us you're a man now yeah a bald man and uh it would have been fun to tour with you as an adult well you know <laughs> we still can yeah one of these days watch everything clear up yeah, we'll, we'll see you. what happens. We'll do a a uh, a live we'll stream Vermont. YouTube tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the next Vermont trip, you know, yeah. keep me in the loop, and I'll I'll try and make that happen. I'll sure. definitely keep in the loop. You know, I was also talking about doing like a smaller thing. You know, uh, as well, just a few people come up, and we actually like do some street and parks because there's a okay. lot of street spots here as well. Yeah, let's that do could be like a pro like a video project or something. You know. Yeah, let's get a small group of people and just. Or a big group, whatever, whatever, more the merrier. But it'd be cool to just. Well, maybe we could talk a uh, talk Montre into an icon in Vermont. You read my Hampshire mind. New Hampshire trip. You read my mind. Go skate around uh, Lebanon, around Rollblade and Rosie's. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good talking to you again. I saw you a couple times throughout the years, but uh, it definitely hasn't been enough. Never enough, man. But I hope to see you soon for sure. And thank yeah, you. Yeah, for, for sure. It for offering me this opportunity yeah you're welcome and uh i will i will keep in touch and i'll be following you and i can't wait to see the skates yeah man i will keep in touch and i'll send you pictures of the skates as i get them and look forward to seeing seeing what you do with all this awesome dude well it'll be up uh and sometime in the near future i'll let you know 
Well, right good talking to you. Take it easy. See you guys. If you enjoyed this interview with Chad Hornish, make sure and hit the like button below. Subscribe to this channel to see more videos for me in the future. And hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a new video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, you can leave those in the comments area. I also have links to my social media below so you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to support this channel and podcast, you can visit the link to the Patreon page below. Patreon supporters will have access to exclusive videos that won't be available here on YouTube, as well as other perks. Thanks for watching this episode of the Then and Now Blading interview series. See you next time.